Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. So I want to talk about something that's uh, fun for uh, fun for me, and uh, um, quote a little bit from the Avatamsaka Sutra, um, which is a wonderful one, and it's one of those many Mahayana. Uh, sutras that starts off with a like, really elaborate um, opening these fantastical scenes um, you know, like the Lotus Sutra has lots of these as well um, and I know you know this, this turns this sort of thing turns off some folks or from just don't, don't just don't connect to it which is, which is fine and I certainly didn't uh, connect to these fantastical uh, openings uh, but they do mean something so I'm going to talk a little about that. And so just an example of the, um, well, what the book one of the sutra calls the wonderful adornments of the leaders of the world. Just to give an example of this, where um, uh, Siddhartha just woke up under the, um, under the Bodhi tree. And, and the, 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 now the tree, its trunk was diamond, its boughs were lapis lazuli, its branches and twigs were various precious elements and, and branching twigs spreading out and um, the fruits were jewels containing a blazing radiance um, and the entire circumference of the tree emanated light and within the light there rained precious stones and with each gem were within each gem were bodhisattvas and great hosts like clouds simultaneously uh, appearing um, it's, yeah, some some extraordinary uh, stuff you know seemingly uh, magical and um, uh, yeah, just, uh, just extraordinary. Um, but you know, some of this extraordinary language, uh, as I, uh, at least seemed to me as I study this stuff more and can understand some of these sutras more, is uh, actually really important stuff. Um, not just um, you know people sort of blowing superstitious, superstitious smoke or something. It, and so here's um, another one from uh, Book Three of uh, Avatamsaka. Uh, sutra where um, Samantabhadra, the Bodhisattva, um, often the one, you know, paired with uh, Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom, uh, he goes into this uh, wonderfully titled Samadhi, um, Imminent Body of the Illuminator of Thusness Samadhi, which is an awesome name. And well, doing that, um, you then, in the presence of the World Honor, Honored One, um, then throughout the realm of space of the cosmos in all the directions and all times, in a subtle, unhindered, vastly expansive light, in all lands visible to the Buddha's eye, within reach of the Buddha's power, manifested by the Buddha's body, and in each atom of all those lands, there were Buddhas as numerous as atoms in the ocean of worlds, and in front of each Buddha were um, Samantha Bhadra, enlightening beings numerous as atoms in an ocean of worlds, um, each also entering into this concentration in the imminent body of the illuminator of thusness in enlightened ones, and then presumably they themselves, you know, entering this infinity, it's this uh, eternal regress of, of uh, infinite uh, Buddhas and Buddhas becoming, um, and so forth for uh, forever and at all times, and this is a wonderful, um, wonderful image, and, and this stuff really matters in the context of this, uh, this sutra, where we're getting these images, through these fantastical images, uh, getting a sense of the interconnectedness and the interpenetration of, of all things in, in the cosmos. Um, and this, that's a, a central point for this, uh, for this sutra. Um, and it might seem like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, but you know, it's, it might seem also very, um, very uh, unreal or, or disconnected from our from our experiences. Um, uh, but I don't think it really is uh, that disconnected. Um, so where I uh, I'm sitting right now, this is where I you know, do my uh, morning and evening practices, and and uh, part of the environment in which I do this is with freight trains. There's the railroad tracks a um, hundred yards uh, away and a CSX line. And so after Friday, it may go silent for a few days or a few weeks if the, um, 
if the uh, rail workers uh, end up going on strike after all. Uh, but usually, you know, it's multiple times a day, the house shakes, literally shakes from the freight trains going by. And so as I'm sitting and, and uh, meditating, you know, doing shikantaza and so, you know, observing various sensations, freight trains are an important part of that. And, but the sound of the freight train, it's not freight train sound, of course. There's, um, our, through experience, our brains put it together, of course we hear these things and just a whole bunch of different sounds get labeled. Okay, here, freight train, being caused by freight train going by. Um, but sitting in chicken toss and listen to this, there's a whole, really it starts becoming a whole bunch of different sounds. And then we don't worry about labeling it freight train or trying to make them into one single cohesive uh, phenomena. Instead, it's a whole bunch of different phenomena uh, going on. Because think of all the different parts of uh, the trains, all the possible sounds that can come out of that. And so I'm each to be its own, um, own distinctive thing. Um, but of course, this, the sounds that we're not, the phenomena being observed there isn't a freight train making sound. Instead, there is all these different sounds that normally one would you know, group together and, and conceptualize as freight train sound. But those sounds, that phenomena is me listening. Uh, there, you know, I'm, I'm part of that. I've got ears that are structured a particular way. And there's air, air pressure. Um, it was, our atmosphere is a certain way. And you know, the walls of, of my house are blocking and affecting those. And depending on whether the windows are open, um, it affects how the sound uh, comes in. Um, and, um, but of course, the wheels moving and the, the cars um, maybe sl often slamming into each other even as the train begins to slow and there's this ripple effect as the faster cars behind slam into the ones in front of them. So there are all these, these other phenomena, physical phenomena going on that shape the sound. So the sound is this massive emerging thing that just as we begin to under figure out what all goes into this, it just ripples out, well, infinitely. I have all the different things that go into making this phenomena um, that experience. Um, I, to some extent, repeating things I've said in a, in a in a past talk, but I mean, it's not just things going on now, but just think of the, the evolution of the Earth's atmosphere over billions of years. That is part of that, because if air pressure was different, the sound, the experience of the sound would be different because the air would be thicker or thinner, having a different effect on how vibrations were transmitted in it. Human evolution, if it was different, it might hear things differently, but our ears are structured the way they are. And of course, my own personal history, um, you know, with all sorts of weird things going on with my ears, that my, um, some damage to them so that the ears are off slightly from one another, creating a certain amount of distortion that you, the rest of you may not have, or you have just different distortions. So there's really this infinite number of things uh, going on, just ripples out throughout the cosmos. and. Um, and throughout time. And so that experience of those sounds uh, during Shikantaz, the, the, the train goes by, or just sitting here or walking down the road and hearing the freight train, whatever that phenomena is, um, just because this, everything being interconnected, interpenetrating, really that phenomena really requiring absolutely everything. And this is the cosmos that's described by these uh, fantastical images, the Avatakasaka uh, Sutra, which is just filled with these. I mean, you get, it beats you over the head with them over and over, you know, usually with having to have 10 examples in each book, um, the one for each direction, uh, of, and involves infinite bodhisattvas and Buddhas and jewels raining out of the sky and so forth. But this, the cosmos, that's being this, uh, a cosmos of everything interpenetrating, everything being required for every moment and every phenomena is the cosmos being described in the, the, the sutra's uh, images. Um, and so while those sorts of images in the past had put me off, now I, I see that, that this is in fact the world that we live in. We live in this fantastical uh, world of the sutras. Um, you know, if we just look now right in front of us, you know, that image of the infinite Buddhas in, in every atom their teaching and enlightening infinite numbers of, uh, of beings I mean, that that is sitting in front of us right at this moment. Um, every, uh, every atom 
between us and outside of us and uh, within us um, being these parts of the the Buddha's body being the being the, t the teachings each a little thing teaching us about um, things as as they are um, teaching in, um, in an infinite number of ways and in infinite atoms um, and being infinitely interconnected and interpenetrating and to, um, so to paraphrase Bodhidharma the vast emptiness everything holy thank you